Well, hi, good morning, and welcome to my shop. Thanks for joining me here for a little more troubleshooting on the low output from one channel problem with this receiver. Today's a rainy, rainy day here today, so being in the shop's not so big a deal. Yesterday, uh, my troubleshooting went pretty good, except towards the end there, I got a little bit turned around and confused from just having too much information juggling around in my head. Um, so I'm going to kind of back up a little bit and just prove to myself a few things I observed yesterday. I think I'm going to want to start with injecting signals into the uh, volume control and just start at that point and uh, my hope is I can find a place in the radio where it doesn't work and a place where it does work and then I can just keep marching these things together until bingo I know where the spot the actual spot is so uh, so so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it right now why not are we all plugged in and safe here here we go Power on. Uh, both speakers connected. And we're in phono mode right now. So hopefully there's a uh, 3 kilohertz signal on here. Let's back this camera up a little bit. Not that's terribly helpful. This is the uh, signal generator I'm using. Okay, we'll go on full, full power. Things are pretty quiet. This takes a long time to warm up, so let's just give it an extra moment. I can feed the signal right in here. Now, what was it? Was it the red one? Was it the red, red one? Nobody home. Okay, the volume's turned right down. Turn it up a bit. And I don't have any output from the signal generator. Bingo. So that's this channel up this way, not the speaker up that way. That's the other speaker. Not much coming out. Okay, now we're going to inject the same signal into the output of the volume controls and see what we hear. Here we go. Well, that's odd in a way right there. That was incredibly loud compared to here. This should be louder. Well, that's just indicating... Well, what is that indicating? That's indicating that there's... Both of these are maybe depressed. One depressed more than the other. Maybe, maybe that's what's going on. Okay, let's try the other. Turn the volume... There's no volume control. I'll turn the uh, signal level down a little bit. Let's try that again. One side, other side muffled. Okay, so we know whatever's going on is going on beyond the volume control. From here I'm going to have to study the schematic and uh, see if there isn't some up on top place I can test. We have the output transformers up here. I don't want to keep flipping this up and down, up and down all the time. So let me check out the schematic here and just see where to go next. I just had to look at that schematic for a few seconds to realize that I'm really in the middle of a very odd logical problem, I guess you could say. I'm feeding a signal in at the volume control, finding one channel strong, one channel not. Yet when I push this radio onto AM, both volume controls get the same signal and produce it out the speaker. So how can that be? How can you get the AM <coughs> side of things, the mono side of things, the FM radio would work the same, all providing their signals <coughs> in a mono form, which is then fed to both left and right channels. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then it comes out. But if I artificially inject a signal, it doesn't come out. That's not making too much sense. Um, but let's verify something. I'm going to switch this to uh, AM here. Am I am I just wrong about that? Okay, so I have the radio turned up. 
and sure, sure, I hear lots of trouble coming from this side, and, and let's just do one speaker at a time here. That's one speaker. I turn it up a little bit. Okay, and this is the other. That's both. That does not sound like it's lacking in trouble. How can this possibly be? Okay, put both speakers back on. I'll stick my test signal in there with it. That's interesting. Okay, so with the radio in radio mode, I can now feed a signal into both channels up here, and it comes out of both. Um, <clears throat> and all that's changing is I'm pushing a switch. Let's try it on an FM mode. Okay, radio's operating in FM with no antenna. There's the hiss. If I turn it up, hey, the hiss is coming out of both speakers. So there's no there's no doubt this is going to work. That's to the right, to my right. That's to my left. It sounds exactly the same. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to study the schematic with this new observation. See if I can sort something out here. You know, one thing I haven't uh, verified, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, that the switch itself isn't part of a problem. What's all that static? Okay, let's pay attention to that for a minute. This is in the FM side of things. <clears throat> Let's not worry about that. Let's not worry. Let's put it to, to, to AM here. Same crashing in there? I think the very same crashing is in there. Another problem, we won't worry about it right now. Um, now. I lost track of what I was trying to do. I was going to push the buttons and see what happens. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to feed this into the weak channel to my left. Okay, and then we're going to push some buttons. We're going to go with tape. Disappeared. Tape. AM, don't know what, short waves, oh that's interesting, one of the short wave bands gets louder. Sounds like it's getting louder and louder. Wow, that's not my imagination, it's just getting louder and louder. Again, with a pure tone in my shop here, as I move my head a little left and right, I go in and out of... Uh, in and out of consciousness is really what I'm doing here. Okay, that's that channel. That's the other channel. They sound the same. So short wave, that was short wave two, short wave one. It's just weaker all around. Now that's interesting too. Why would it get generally weaker? Wow, okay, more observations here. This is a, um, this is AM radio. Yeah.
same now in both and then finally the only stereo function in here gone on one channel quite faint on the other really really gone okay it's interesting observation where's that going to lead oh my gosh i don't know it's going to lead me back to the schematic here okay i think i'm far enough into figuring something out here that it's worth turning on the camera and talking so uh, what i've been doing is i've been studying these switches TA789, and you see there'll be another one down here, TA, see the small letter A there, hidden there, very hard to see, 4, 5, little a, 6, TAA, TA, the B is missing, it took me a long time to figure that out, oh wow, all these switches here, I'm kind of laughing because I think I've got my hand on something, see here? B, small b, K, small b, notice these are all b's, S, small b, J, small b, look at this S, small b one, same thing is right here, S, small a, something A, so this is the A side, this is the B side. All the switches on this side are on the B side. B side of what? So if we look at the switch chart here, or the switch diagram right here, TA is standing for tape. Um, why, why didn't they put the PU in here also? It doesn't really appear. Okay, so anyway, this is the TA. This is the button I'm pushing to enable a tape input. You see the arrow here and the note down here tells you that when you push this button, these sliders in here slide one step this way. So another thing to note is the small a and the, this is small a and the small b here, and the numbering, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So for instance, on the TA push button, wouldn't be surprising to find a switch labeled TA, A, 9, 8, and 7. With the button up, this diagram is valid. So you'd see that 9 and 8 are tied by this jumper here, if you like. And over here on this side, on the B side, same thing, 9 and 8 are tied. We're just concentrating on the A side right now. It's a stereo thing, so you wouldn't be surprised to find another set of exactly the same thing hooked up to this push button. And sure enough, it's this one here, five, four, five, and six. A. So, with the T A on, it must be taking the signal from this line, line number eight. It's selectively directing line number eight to either nine or seven, depending upon the position of the switch. So eight is switched between nine and seven. Did he get it? Did he get it? Eight is switched between nine and seven. So here's eight, and sure enough, there's seven. This is the um, phono or tape side, and nine, this is the radio. If we follow this line all the way back, we'll see it's like a continuous line to the other switch, giving you a perfect mono input at this point. And where is it ultimately coming from? Through this capacitor, sometimes anyway, it depends upon the switch here, KB, won't worry about it. Through the capacitor, reach another switch here. I'm not going to worry about this one. If it's one way or the other, I'd say if it's switched this way, we would follow this up, and we find out that this is the FM detector output right here. So on here is the FM audio signal. And if we follow the other line and we go up towards the detector, we'll find that this is the AM output from the AM the last IF transformer here in association with the uh, diode detector up there. 
So coming in here is the radio signal. It always appears in both speakers fine. And that's occurring. When that's occurring, this switch is in this position. Now we push the button to enable tape or phono and we start experiencing trouble. We have reconnected from 8.9 to 8.7 and the problem begins to appear. We've released from 9 so there's no longer a short between 9 and, and uh, 6 here ultimately supplying exactly the same signal to the two output tubes. So that's out of the picture. So we now have two separate channels as soon as we flip this switch. One, one channel appears weak and the other one does not. And I know that because I fed the signal right at the start of today's session right into the connector here and you could experience the difference. The switch has failed. Is that what it is? The switch has failed. So we want to listen to this switch. We want to either inject signals or listen to it. Now, listening to it might be a good idea. We could put this in the AM radio mode. That will connect 8 to 9. Forget about what's coming out of the receiver. Take my signal tracer and stick it on this number 7 here, terminal. Assuming I can figure that out. Stick it. Yeah, I guess I can because this diagram is pictorial over here. This diagram is pictorial. Stick it on 7. Hear this. So that's one side of the phono or one side of the tape. Stick it on the other, the other one, the seven would be pin number four, and here's the other side. And see if in fact one side is weak. And we'll do that with the radio on, but the volume turned down so we can't hear it. And now feed a signal in uh, to the tape. And there's this all passive electronics here. We don't even we don't even need it to be on. But I'll keep it on for now. We don't even need it to be on to do this. That's interesting too. Okay, so I gotta sort out where is T A, that should be easy to figure out. And where where are these numbers? Now this diagram over here, does it give front and back? Do they say which is the front? Well these these are the buttons. So this this would be the front the front so this is the back just just to make it more tricky <laughs> I'm gonna print this page so I can rotate this diagram around to match the, uh, the radio or uh, I, I find this stuff extremely challenging to sort out um, you know without printing out a whole bunch of diagrams and getting out the colored pencils and doing all that stuff which I'm trying to avoid so I am going to print this guy here and uh, Might as well print page two and three. Great. Uh, comma three. Print. Great. I'll get those prints and then we'll carry on. Okay, so I'm getting ready now to do the, uh, you know, which terminal is which and do some testing of the switches there. I have a, I have a camera looking down at it here. The camera rocks a little bit, so, but in amongst all that stuff are all those switch terminals. And hopefully I can figure out which one's which and then uh, we can either listen, listen I think is the right thing to do, to what's on those switches. Um, but first, when I was just getting ready to, to do this, the radio's not on by the way, looking at the push buttons, trying to see if I can get a, you know, get, get this to work in a camera where I can kind of say, well this, this switch must be now I can certainly do this. I don't think you can do it in the camera. It must be this. And the TA switch, this one here, must be this row. Now that, that's a little odd because that row is full of uh, tuning controls for tuning stuff. Yet according to the switch diagram, this is nothing but um, uh, switching the audio around. It shouldn't have any of those coils there. So normally these coils sit on top of the switch that pertains to them, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. 
but uh, that's a little unnerving now. So on off, on off would be here. The next button over would be here, for sure. It's lining up. The next button over is definitely here. But what caught my attention is something I hadn't looked close enough at. I mean, look at these buttons. Say so this is the on off. This is tape. And uh, this is not. Nah, wait a minute now. Have I got this right? Myself? On off. This is tape. This is AM. Shortwave 1, shortwave 2, short and FM. This is labeled stereo. This one's labeled mono. What are they doing there? What are they trying to say? If you want to listen to your tape in mono, you push both these down. But this would engage the radio. Something happening there. Is that is that pertinent to this problem? Good question. Now, in the meantime, I've turned the radio off, and I don't like turning it on and off, on and off, on and off. So I'm trying to leave it off for the next round. So we'll leave the button question for now. I'm sure I can probably find some reference to it somewhere about uh, about how to operate that exactly. I'm sure it's not a secret. It's just a secret for me. Now I printed out these diag this diagram here. Let me show you what happened. Of course. There, here's the diagram. Oh, something at my door. Hang on a second here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to feed the signal generator signal, the 3 kilohertz, into both channels with the set off. So we're not going to hear anything. And I'm going to take my signal tracer. And we'll, we'll, we'll hear this once I get it going. poke on the different terminals and see if I can just just see if I can successfully follow this tiny little diagram <laughs> of course which I have on my own computer screen which you cannot see a blowed up version of that so I can read it and see it so the thinking here is uh, pin number eight which is uh, there, there there's nine nine pins which way do they go they go the other way around, don't they? They go... Uh, so, 9 is at this end, 1 is at that end. 9 at this end. And this is switching, not 9, it's switching, switching, switching schematic, please. I can't, I can't read anything like that. <laughs> okay, just one sec. I'm just going to peek on my own. And make sure I know. I think it's 8 between 9 and 7, isn't it? So, 8... From the uh, switch's point of view, wait a minute, I still don't have it here. Eight, eight is the output. Seven and nine are the two inputs. So we should find this tone on one of the two inputs. The tape button is uh, is up, up. It's not up. Get them all up. Okay, every button is up now, which is not a normal way to operate this radio. In fact, I'm going to push the off button here. Yeah. Okay. If I if I were if I were to take a, a really good not the fact, take a really good guess at it not not guess I, if I were to assess yes I'm assessing which which one of these is likely to be it it's going to be second row in and it's going to be on the on the on my on my left side it's completely covered. Well, let's let's see what we can get. Here's here's what's happening. Nothing's happening. Oh, I turned I turned this way down. I'm gonna bring the frequency down a bit, just so it's a little more comfortable here. Should find something just like that in here. There we 
go. Can I even get in there with this? So what's happened is that they, they have all the switches with all the terminals, and then on top they've put little plates, and then mounted on these plates all those parts you can see. So these parts are sitting on a plate that's sitting on top of all the switch terminals, some of which are exposed. I said it'd be on the left-hand side. It's terrible. Just terrible. It can't be this, can it? Cannot. Cannot be this. So all these upper parts with their terminals have nothing to do with the switch underneath. It's a green wire here. It goes right in the right area. It's, it's right here. Because if I touch one of these, we should hear it. That's the ground. If I, if I stick it in here... Okay, it's making it all the way from here to the other end of the wire. <laughs> and from there, it's traveling. Oh, I can see it traveling on these two cables. Is it on those cables or is, it, or is that coming from? I think that's the front. There's one there. Hmm. How's that happen? Because it's... I've got the switches in my head wrong. Okay. Anyway, we're finding it here at the end of these two cables. These two shielded cables to see if I've connected this directly to the shielded cables that I'm finding it on the end, but I think I have. So here it is. In. Okay, buttons up. Buttons up. The the uh, the, 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 the buttons up. Buttons up. So it would look like this. So it's 8 and 9 that are attached. So I should be able to find it Pick one of these. I should find it on one of, one of these. There or there. I don't find it on either. Okay, kind of guessing here. I'll try the other side. Here or here. No. So, oh, 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 wow. I probably put it pretty. Sorry about that. I just elbowed a microphone here. I'm getting a little excited. I'm going to push down the TA button. Very same on the end of the cable. What about these other things? Now it's coming through here. And coming through there. So I think I've identified what's happening. No, I haven't. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Well, wait a minute. If it's coming this way, I, I know you can't really see this stuff. So I'm just taking the number 8 and uh, I'm looking at 9 and 7, I think. Or the other way around, maybe. 7 and 9. One gets it, one doesn't. Now if I flip this switch to radio, is that, is that radio? That's radio. Should be the other way around now, shouldn't it? find it leaving. Okay, we'll go to the other side here. Well, so I find it on the end of the two shielded wires, but I can't find it on any of the other terminals in there under this setting. I've got the radio switched on. So the radio should be energizing, as I have determined here. Um, switch 9 is carrying the radio signal. So we should hear it on 7. If we hear it, that's 7, and the other one would be 9. So if we go back to tape. Hear it on seven. Let me try my other camera here. Maybe it's, it's this is difficult stuff to show uh, because 
the hand of the tool gets in the way too. Okay, so here here's the shielded cable right. Oh, that was the shield. Shielded cable. One and the other. Now with the tape button pushed down, that signal at the end of these cables should be fed through the switch and onward. So we should find it again somewhere on another terminal. So that's the end of the wire. There's a terminal with it on it. This one here, very same thing. End of the wire, another terminal. Now if I pop the switch up, it should go away. So now I've switched the signal. Right, I'm not I'm not doing this right. I'm not doing this right. The the um uh, the, these cables aren't carrying the uh, radio signal and, and no 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 so one of these has to be number eight that receives the signal when the switch is thrown right it'll have to be this I'm sorry if I'm babbling here but I'm, I'm sort of thinking a little faster than I'm talking um, so if I push this button we should hear it so there we're hearing it so that's got to be the tape heading out. So if I were to switch this to radio, and if the radio were on, we would hear the radio sound come out of the, uh, come out of the, uh, out, out of this terminal. Okay, sorry, once again, I'm, I'm thinking ahead of my talking here. I think we think a lot faster than we talk. When we really get thinking, we stop using uh, words and it's just kind of notions and ideas and uh, stuff like that floating around with no words really associated with them. That's what I'm kind of crashing into here. Uh, okay. Well, we know the signal can get from here to there <laughs> along a piece of wire. And we know it can get through the switch to the, uh, call, call it the output side of the switch sounds exactly the same. So it would sound to me, it would seem to me that the switch cannot be implicated in this. That at the switch, everything is working fine. And I do have this thing monoized. Maybe, maybe we better just do this and just be absolutely sure because funny things are happening. So now one of these wires should sing that one. And I have the uh, I, do, I have the radio button pushed, so we should not hear it on the other terminal. The other terminal. If I push the uh, tape, now we should hear it on the output terminal. There it is. And it's not on the other one because I've got this like this. I'm gonna put this like this. This guy's so sensitive when I get the point the business end of it close to the connection. It starts coming out of the speaker. Now this should be the other way around. You get it there. Don't get it there. You get it here. Don't get it there. It's all exactly as you would think it should be. What does that mean? It means it's time to stop for a moment. Okay, I can continue this. Uh, next stop from here would be the volume control. It's up on top here where I can get at it. And the set is still off and that's okay, it's all passive components. So we, now, so I'm going to put this back into uh, both channels working. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm doing this with just one lead, I'm not. The other lead is connected uh, down here to the chassis of my signal generator. Okay, so we'll look at the output of the volume control volume control turned up a fair bit. What's there? That sounds... Now I'm just a signal fre single frequency. Gotta be a little careful here. I lowered it too. Listen to that. Well, they sound awfully identical to me. Uh, let's use the radio here and feed in the, uh, the audio from that, the FM hiss audio for a test. 
test. Okay, everyone. Okay, again, we're not going to hear anything out of this. Let's check right at the signal source. Okay, at the switch. Exactly the same at the volume control. That's the output of the volume control. It sounds exactly the same. From here, everything kind of goes down under. There's a two shielded wires leaving the center terminal of the volume control, carrying the signal. I'm going to chase those wires down. Again, the set's not operating, so... Okay, I'm going to flip this up. This, I think, is the most likely... One of the more likely times for me to damage something, so I'm... Fairly careful doing this. Okay. Here they are. These are the two cables coming out there's a third one here I don't know what that is two cables running all the way over to well way over here what is this I don't know what kind of a deal is up in there a lot of capacitors here okay so the signal is still going if I got it right, we should find it on the end of these two cables. Okay, so we should find it here. And we should find it down here. Where? Down. Down here. What are all these? And what is this? Looks like there's some kind of gizmo up there. Um, now I can't see it because I've gone and uh, uh, maybe I'll just look at the mirror. Oh, I've got my phone in my pocket. So I apologize if you've been hearing some phone interference on the video just now. Um, what is here? It's something that's buried under the tuning, big tuning capacitor. It's really not very visible. What is this? So, there's another one here. And they, they look like the bottom of the IF cans. They, they certainly aren't. The IF cans are here. So got a thing here and a thing here. What's this thing? They, they, they look to be identical. Well, what would they possibly be? We're going to have to flip this down and take a look. I'm going to have to flip this down. Okay, again, it's not switched on. Take your time. This is where bad things happen. Up and down. Okay. Um, well, you know what it is? It's more switches. It's more switches. It's the uh, it's these uh, peripheral switches here. Let me just take that off so I can make any bad boo boos. So what I'm seeing are the leads coming up to this these two sets of switches. Soft jazz bass solo. So these are tone controls plus one of these not working right. Germans and their tone controls. You know, the more stuff you load into a radio like this, the more things there are to go bad. How much you want to bet it's bad connection on one of those and that's all it is. Signal in. We're going to run it this time. Signal in. Uh, speaker not connected here. We have the hiss being fed in and I 
got the volume up a little high. We're going to turn it down a bit. And we're on tape. So it should come out of the speakers. Hiss on both. The expectation is the one on my left ear is uh, muffled. And we're going to fiddle with those buttons. This is what it's going to come down to. Tone switch. Right, okay, power, power on. And we, here we go. Plug it in. Volume down. Ooh, it's up pretty high. Okay, we're ready. Dim bulbs. We didn't get nearly as much rain as I had hoped for. We have two uh, rain barrels here that we uh, we utilize, and uh, it takes a fairly good rainstorm to, to fill them. They've been empty for a couple of days. Okay, now I should be hearing the hiss. So I turn this down. Let's turn this up a little bit. There it is. Turn this. That's the radio uh, volume control. So now we're going to listen to one speaker, then the other, to hear the difference. Lots of nice hiss. Nothing. Okay, we're going to listen to the nothing side. Whoops, wrong side. The nothing side. And now I'm going to work these controls over here. <laughs> Watch this. What will happen? Never happens. Never, never comes to life. Make them all up. Tone controls. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Effective component in the tone control system uh, that I'm right on top of right now. Signals coming from the volume control heading that away to these tone things, and then um, coming out of the tone things, messed up. The tone things, uh, probably coming out on a shielded cable. Um, two shielded cables. Heading back. Okay, I want to tip this up again. Talk on it. Okay, switch that off. Yeah, let's just hit the main switch here. Tip this guy back up. Now I notice the capacitors in this control area these are highly reliable capacitors so I would think but nothing is perfect nothing nothing is perfect yes we live in an imperfect world anybody notice uh, so we come in here do the tone thing then it's got to leave you would think it would leave on two more cables. The uh, the tone the tone rotating adjustment is here, and uh, I can see. I don't know what to see. This this is coming from this tone area. There's something similar going on over here to this base. One is base, and the other is treble. Just. Come on, okay? You don't need all these tone controls. This must have been confusing for the uh, people with these radios. I have to admit, they do sound good when they work well. But, uh, 
Okay, so the receiver's off, the signal's still going in, it's passive all the way to here. How does it get out of here? Where where's it go from, from here? From these on the schematic it's just all mashed together. Uh it really isn't giving you a hint on where in the radio any of these things are, but this is what we're looking at, all these capacitors and all this tiny little stuff here. I am willing to guess it's only one capacitor causing a problem. It's on the treble side. It seems to be the case that treble side, I guess if you had a defect on the base adjustment side, it, it could do something too, all around. Um, open resistor, shorted capacitor, open capacitor. Yeah, one of those possibilities. Can I test these in some way? I don't even know what these are. Just because they're right here doesn't guarantee they're part of the deal. And then how does this thing get out of here without using a shielded cable? Maybe, maybe it leaves from these guys. A little capacitor right there. Another one right here. Capacitors everywhere. It's just so unlikely any of these components are defective. Even the ones I suspect are bad, like this kind of guy, turn out not to be so bad. Doesn't guarantee anything. Well, we can look for a shorter capacitor. That's easy to do. We can eliminate that possibility. Assuming, assuming these capacitors aren't uh, aren't in an unfavorable. circuit for doing this. We can also do it like a comparative test. What did I bump there? I bumped something on this. What did I bump? Bump the hold? I bumped the hold button. Okay. What's this show us? Any old capacitor. Zero. How do we get to zero? Well, I just happen to pick the shorted out one. Because these are in a circuit, you know, uh, you have to take these results. Another zero. As my, uh, you know, they could be putting shorts right across these on purpose to get them out of the circuit. Depending upon, you know, where you're pushing these buttons and everything. I don't want to analyze all that. Um, i got to figure out where the signal comes out of here and check it to see what it is. I can't find any shielded cables for it. Study the schematic, maybe there's a hint there. Well, uh, so just in looking at all this stuff, this is probably some of the capacitors I was looking at under there. Oh my gosh, what a schmozzle. Um, you'd think these would be close to the volume control. Those are probably some of the ones I've changed. Well, these are resistors. Here's the capacitors down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these are the ones I've fooled with. Coming up here. Um, so this is one tone control. The other one took me quite a while to spot it. It's here. So one is bass, one is treble. This one. I'm not sure, but I think this is the trouble control. It doesn't really say. And plus, the slider goes to point Z. Where's point Z? I haven't found that yet. So we have one adjustable tone control, the other adjustable tone control. Neither of them had any effect, but we were listening to a single frequency. Let me 
the volume of that signal frequency go single frequency go up and down a bit. We did listen with the radio hiss, but I don't think I really worked these. Tone controls can't remember now. Switching deal in here. Some kind of weird dotted line with a T on top of it. That, that's indicating this is shielded. Yeah, this must be a shielded, a two-wire shielded cable heading from the switch all the way out to heading from the volume control all the way to the switches. So there's a, a shielded cable of the sort with two internal conductors doing that. Um, and this is going to a switch. Oh my lord, how am I going to sort this out? Um, Now I'm trying to remember. Did did I did I test this and find a problem on the output of the volume control? <laughs> I can't remember now. Oh my gosh! I believe the problem is apparent on the volume control, if I remember right. So not apparent here, but apparent here. It's all this stuff in between. Oh my god! Well, I'm going to end it here for today. Um, the difficulty is almost certainly in all this tone control schmozzle here. Uh, how much of this is bypassed when you flip to... That's a, hey, none of this is bypassed when you go to... Wait a minute, let's keep going. When you switch it to the radio, none of this is bypassed. It's all in there doing its thing, and the radio sounds fine only when it's coming from here. Yet I found the signal here when I injected it there without any trouble. Yeah, I am going to end it here for today. It means it's something to do right in here. That's my conclusion. It's something to do right, right in this area that I'm circling right now. There's a problem. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot for watching again. Uh, I'm not nailing this, but I think I'm kind of hovering in the area. So thanks a lot, and uh, see you on the next video. I won't give up on this. <laughs>